Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got my second episode of the League One Roundup series and I think it's fair to say that to everyone who kept up with the League One scores over the weekend that it was pretty damn uneventful. Like literally, I don't think I've seen as many nil-nil draws on one game weekend of, of one league. Honestly, in my life, there were so many nil-nil draws and honestly, I find it so frustrating how the one game where I actually predicted the nil-nil draw didn't have it, it didn't end nil nil. In fact, I actually provided probably probably the biggest shock result of the season. But I'll get into that later on in the video. So starting off with Cambridge nil, MK Dons one. Now MK Dons, this is probably their toughest test I've had in a while. Definitely wasn't the best display from them. You know, Cambridge definitely would provide a, I think a tough a tough challenge than the what MK Dons probably would have expected them to. You know, Cambridge, I think there definitely was like a lot more fight, a lot more desire after that um, game against Sheffield Wednesday last weekend. But however, they were still so, so poor in front of goal. They missed so many opportunities. And in fairness, sometimes they were a little bit unlucky. You know, there was definitely that one opportunity where I think it bounced off the crossbar and they couldn't quite get the rebound. But yeah, apart from that, Cambridge had so many opportunities and just didn't put them away. And MK Dons, you know, for most parts of the game, they were pretty solid at the back. And they did eventually managed to um, break the deadlock and um, Warren O'Hara with, with you know first at the back it's a pretty nice strike I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you there but you know it was just, I think it was one of those games where really well fr fr from a Cambridge point of view that like you've, you've had more of the ball you've created more chances but you haven't taken those chances and then those chances being missed have come back to haunt you I think that's definitely what that game was there and overall MK Dons um, ended the game pretty well at least and Due to slip-ups elsewhere, MK Dons actually are in a nice position actually to, to, to maybe even climb into the top two, which for them would be incredible. So yeah, MK Dons definitely breathing down Rotherham's neck right now. It's going to be an, in an interesting in the last couple of weeks there. But again, a huge three points for MK Dons. Cambridge are going to be feeling pretty annoyed that they didn't get anything out of this game. Charlton 2, Burton 0. Wasn't a classic game at all. You know, this game pretty, was pretty much just wrapped up in the first half. Charlton with 2. Pretty nice goals. I mean, to be fair, their first goal was, I thought that was really, really good. You know, it was a nice kick from McGillivray and then um, a lovely ball. Man, to find that in who, who took a nice touch, managed to then chip it over the Burton goalkeeper to make it 1 0. It was really, really nice there. Honestly, in the first half, Burton, you know, they definitely hit, like, again, like Cambridge had a lot of chances where they could have taken the lead and they would just, again, won't go in the front of goal. You know, they did strike the crossbar, but again, that's not going to do anything early because it, it, it didn't go in early. And obviously Charlton got their second goal right before half time. And then that was pretty much it. Second half, actually, nothing happened in the second half. And then in the end, it was a pretty easy win for Charlton. And to, uh, after their dreadful run of form, that definitely going to be nice for them to get two back-to-back -back wins and two back-to-back -back clean sheets as well. Charlton 3, AFC Wimbledon 1. Again, Wimbledon, like, they're going to be pretty feeling pretty frustrated how, how they didn't hold on in, in this one. But I've got to say Charlton, the defending for... for um, Wimbledon's goal was really poor. It was really, really poor. It was really easy for Jack Rodorni just, just to um, make his way through and it's a nice finish from him. Taking one, one, one to Wimbledon and pretty much for, for the rest of the game, Wimbledon just sat back and tried to catch Cheltenham back on the counter-attack again. And then that's, that, that worked for them until the last 10 minutes where Cheltenham managed to get three goals. You know, they kept on pushing, kept on working and they did manage to um, get their reward. Alfie May getting another goal obviously as he is in the hunt for the golden boot. And then due to there's been a lack of goals from, from uh, Ross Stewart and uh, Michael Smith and people like that, so he can call Stockton. So I think maybe definitely I think he's gonna I think for these next like couple of games he's definitely gonna be looking to maybe get um, a few more goals to try and get that golden boot. But uh yeah, in the end, pretty, pretty comfortable in the effort Cheltenham. Well deserved win. And they're gonna be pretty happy. They're now in the top half now, so pretty good um enters he As for Wimbledon. It was just lackluster, really, really poor performance. Then out in the bottom four due to results going against them. And honestly, as of right now, Wimbledon like they haven't won in 19 games. 19 games without a win. That is disgraceful form from Wimbledon. Like, like even Crew have won recently. That's Wimbledon that is shocking. And honestly, I think Wimbledon are going to get get relegated now. I can't see them pulling off a great escape again. And if they do. Fair enough, but again, it's continue happening. Crew nil, Bolton won. Again, not really a classic game. 
you know, Bolton absolutely battered crew in this game. They were had more possession than they had. They created more chances, but again, like a theme in this video, like Cambridge, like Burton, Bolton just weren't good enough in front of the goal. And it wasn't until the 90th minute where Bakayoko managed to get the winner for Bolton. And honestly, to be fair, like, it was what you expect, because Crew were not a good team at all. I think that's pink, made pretty clear by now. Crew are not a good team in there, Bolton. I think in the end, they just um, got the, and they deserve a win, you know, the Crew goalkeeper, who I'm not a huge fan of. Some of the fans will know why. Um, you know, he pulled some unbelievable saves in the game. But honestly, I think, to be fair, I think Crew, they were just outclassed by Bolton in this game, really. Like, I think he just run levels the fact that Crew are a League 2 team. Really. Like, I think they're... Their summer sales just definitely backfired on them massively, and their obviously the long run didn't help them there. And they are now nine points from safety. Like, if, if relegation wasn't confirmed for them earlier, it definitely is now. That's all I'm going to say. Now, I've got a few nil draws here, um, which I'm, I'm just going to rattle through quickly. Fleetwood nil, Don Doncaster nil. Now, even though I predicted Fleetwood to win this game 3 0, I think you, you also did expect this game to end goalless, you know, just two really poor teams. Neither one, neither team offered anything forward, and they were both really shambolic at the back. They're both in a relegation battle, Doncaster now four points off safety, and teams but they do have games in hand, so I think Doncaster, like Crew, look definitely looking set for the drop, and for Fleetwood, although it, it looks like that that probably will survive, it's just down the fact that the, the teams below them are just even worse than them, so yeah, and it's not a good game at all. Drillingham nil, Sheffield Wednesday nil. Again, both sides weren't great in this game, you know, you'd expect that from Gillingham. But um, for Sheffield Wednesday, they were really poor for large parts of this game, I thought. You know, Gillingham, like for the first hour or so, they looked pretty solid, but I think they just ran out of steam, to be fair. Barry Bannon had a couple of close, um, close opportunities there, he just didn't put them away, which is unlike him. And honestly, to be fair, again, wasn't a classic game at all, I think. Sheffield Wednesday, like, I think the fact, like, after that 6 and win against Cambridge, have looked really mediocre in these last two games against Accra and Gillingham, so... Yeah, I think I think these two drop. I think those four points that they've dropped in these last two games definitely might impact their playoff chances. Although, although they are still in it, you know, they're only a point behind Sunderland, so who knows? But uh, yeah, again, like a point does not seem a favour. Gillingham now out of the bottom four, though. That's good for them, but it's going to be tight. And uh, as, I, as, as I said before, Sheffield Wednesday are it's currently still in seventh place. And Lincoln nil, Sunderland nil. Again, only made my review on this. Um, game which um, will be at the end, will be the end cards at the end. And um, again, just quick overview, again, Sunderland, like every single, ev like everyone in this video so far, they really poor in front of goal, they didn't do enough. And I think for the amount of chances we had, definitely was the worst out of the lot, out of the, all the games this weekend, because we hit the post for five times. Again, just really, really shocking in front of goal. The referee, stinker. And to be fair, it was definitely a game which we should have won because Lincoln didn't do anything in the game. They didn't really offer much. Like, yeah, they had like one or two really good chances, but apart from that, they're just happy to, they're, they're just happy to sit back in there. Yeah, again, like for Sheffield Wednesday, it was just two points drop for Sunderland there. And it uh, wasn't great there. Oxford won, Ipswich won. Again, like I um, um, predicted in my um, score prediction video, this was a great game of football. Two really, really good teams. I thought Oxford probably were the better team in the first half there. You know, they definitely had a lot of chances which they should have really put away. Definitely, I think I think they were definitely were gonna ruin those as was proven in the second half when Ipswich managed to although although, although Ipswich weren't like um, weren't bad in the first half, I think Oxford just overpowered them a little bit. However, second half Ipswich definitely stood up and became a better team and obviously they did they take the lead and it was really poor defending really from Oxford for that Ipswich goal, but yeah, um, yeah. I think after 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 went one, one, one all up, it just became really complacent, and then Oxford did manage to get the last gasp equaliser, which really killed Ipswich off. I think, I think had Ipswich won this game, they would have been three points off the playoffs and back in the playoff race. But honestly, now they are only I changed the story. No, four points off. My mistake. Um, but they are they are currently six points off the playoffs right now, and everyone above them's got a game in hand. So, and well, yeah. Wickham Sheffield Wednesday both had a game on hand now and Sunderland are due to have one as well. So yeah, not good from Interjet and Oxford. Um, they, they have now dropped the fifth due to Plymouth's win and although I still, I still think they will get playoffs, I think they're going to be looking under the shoulders a little bit, I'm just not going to lie. Plymouth 4, Accra and nil. Fantastic um, performance from Plymouth there. Really, really great. I think I think the scoreline doesn't really uh, ref reflect the game too much because I think, I think Accra and were a lot better than what the score suggests. 
like going forward they were pretty damn good you know if they were they, they had the same amount of shots as Plymouth did and um, however however at the back they were all over the place they were shocking at the back which is definitely well it makes sense because Plymouth scored four goals and overall like I'm, I'm not gonna take this game from, um, from Plymouth all they were fantastic really really great performance and then they now have a five point cushion over Sheffield Wednesday down seven so I think it's looking pretty likely now that Plymouth are gonna get the playoffs um, and leave, like, like even though I keep mentioning playoffs and um, sorry Plymouth's running they, they keep winning games and they keep keeping clean sheets well like to be fair like Plymouth are in some fantastic form like I think they won the last five games keeping five clean sheets in the process as well so they're looking pretty damn good definitely want to look out for in the playoffs obviously should they keep there in the end and also fun fact um, in this fixture this season between Accrington and Plymouth there's been an aggregate score of 8-1 so Plymouth have um, battered Accrington in both games this season so we're Accrington fair to say that they do not like Plymouth right now which is fair uh, if I say. Now we, we, we do have the final 0-0 draw of the weekend, Portsmouth nil, Wickham nil. Again, this was really poor for Portsmouth, I'm not going to lie. They, I think Wickham just had too much um, going for them, really. Portsmouth didn't really offer too much going forward. Again, Wickham didn't hit, hit, hit um, the chances, really. They definitely should have won this game. However, poor shout-out to Gavin Bazunu and for Portsmouth. Unbelievable um, performance from him. Definitely was the man in the match for this game. Made some fantastic saves. And um, yeah, I think Portsmouth playoff race. If it, if it wasn't over now, definitely is now. I mean, I mean, I mean like sorry, if it wasn't over before, it definitely is now. And uh, yeah, just like, it's, like to be fair, I, I think overall it's been a really, really poor season from Portsmouth, just because like yeah, that that, that 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 little run in January and February, but other than that, they've been really, really poor. And they're Wickham, although they are still in the playoff race again. Sheffield Wednesday to have a game in hand on them, as do Sunderland, and what well, I mean Sunderland will as well. So Wickham. They are something that like like they are only a point behind, but should Sunderland and Sheffield both win their games in hand, it could be looking pretty unlikely that we can will get top six. But who knows? Who knows? Now then, on to the shock result of the season by far: Rotherham nil, Shrewsbury three. Like what the hell? Like who would have thought this would happen? Like to be fair, I thought maybe if the nil nil was a bit risky. No, it clearly, clearly wasn't. Cause like I thought, Rotherham would end up winning this game. Cause I literally, in last week's video where I said where I titled it in, "Are Rotherham bottling it?" They go and then then beat Lincoln. I'm thinking, okay, they're gonna start winning games again. But no, they fucking get battered at home. This fucking Shrewsbury Town. Like I'm not gonna lie, Shrewsbury. They've been looking pretty dangerous lately. You know, you know that 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 um five nil win against Morgan last Tuesday. That the three nil win against Rotherham. That's like fucking hell. They are looking. Dangerous, and although they've got nothing to play for, Shrewsbury, the end of the season pretty well. And this in my predictions that sort of season, I thought Shrewsbury um, will we, we finish mid-table like, like 13th place. And although the current, I think they're in 17th right now, like, like although they've been massively underperforming, these last two games are the perfect. And I love why I thought they would do do a lot better this season. And again to Rotherham, what the fuck happened to you? You were terrible in this game. And I know, yeah, yes, I know you're down to 10 men. For a large part of the game, and it was a centre half um, who went off as well. But even before then, like literally, Shrewsbury already won the love by that point, and they were looking pretty well, well not, not comfortable, but they were looking pretty good. And I think that red card definitely, definitely, um, well, I'm not gonna say made an impact on the game, but definitely gave Shrewsbury like a, a little bit more comfort. And, um, and obviously, due to Rotherham's really exposed defence, Shrewsbury then ran, ran up a lovely, a memorable 3 0 win. And Rotherham, like, I've got to say, like, I know I've, I've Titled last week's video saying that they are going to bottle it. The, the guys that actually end up bottling it. Who would have sort of thought it happened? Like, to be fair, Rotherham had such a huge lead as well over MK Dons. That's now down to four points. MK Dons are creeping by Rotherham right now. It's going to be an interesting promotion race there, which really should be wrapped up weeks ago. So, uh, yeah, Rotherham, yeah, uh, Rotherham bottling it. Who knows? Again, there's still seven games or so left to play the season. So, again, who knows? And finally, we do, we do have Wigan 4, Morecambe 1. Again, I think everyone's told it's coming ready. Just, just a really good performance from Wigan. Really, really dominant performance from there. Morecambe was just outclassed, really. And again, Wigan, you know, four pretty good goals. Morecambe obviously did, did, did have the penalty, which gave them a little bit of hope for a little bit. But then obviously Wigan quickly put that to bed. And yeah, just routine game from Wigan. And honestly, I think Wigan right now are probably the favourites for, for, for the title right now. Just because Rotherham are fucking up so badly. And Wigan... Again, like I said on the um, last um, in last week's video, after the um, loss to, to Sunderland, they've been on fantastic form, and uh, 
yeah, that, that looks like stuff for the title. And Morgan, they've considered nine goals from two games now. It's not looking good for them. They're still in the bottom four. And although they are only a point from safety, I, I think they'll end up uh, going down, which is a shame because I would have liked Morgan to stay up. But I think this league's proven too difficult for Morgan. And that's going to be it for my roundup there. I'm going to give a quick um, prediction for the only midweek game, which is going to be Plymouth against Cheltenham. I think this could be an absolute goal fest, to be, I'm not going to lie. Both sides love, love to score goals. How Ch- Cheltenham most love conceding goals as well. And whereas Plymouth don't, I still think this will um, be full of goals. So I'm going to say Plymouth 4, Cheltenham 2. Sue me, Plymouth fans, but I think this could have a, quite a few goals in it. But that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you did, then be sure to give it a like. And if you are new, then do make sure that you are subscribed and also turn on notifications to be notified the second I upload the video. My score prediction video will be out on Friday at 5 pm, the usual time, so be sure that you are um, watching out for that. Cheers, guys, for watching. I'll see you all next time.